Okay, welcome to Intimate Talk with Dr. Tolu once again. My name is Dr. Tolu. I am a clinical relationship and marriage counselor. I am a sex therapist and I am a, I am a matchmaker. I am in the business of building homes, mending relationships and fixing sexual issues. And of course, tonight, I will be fixing all your sexual issues. As I'm going to be concluding the topic I started on Tuesday, the right titled, Why You Are in a Sexless Marriage. It's, it's, not, it's not something that is new, actually, in this part of the world. Maybe because I talked about the topic on Tuesday, every text, every uh, messages I've been getting on uh, my Facebook page, Intimate Talk with Solo, has been something that has to do with this particular topic. My husband is not making love to me. My wife, as in, it has been so overwhelming. I'm telling you, the messages I've been receiving, I felt like, wow. I actually knew this is a big problem, but I never knew it's this bad. Everybody, it's like, because I talked about it, people were able to open up, and people started sending me messages, a lot, a whole lot of them, about this particular issue, sexless marriage. All right, so tonight, um, how do I start tonight's show? Okay, um, okay, let me just say this before I forget. Okay, let me start with that. Um, okay, it's gone now. Funny enough with, um, with Mr. Ayana now. Okay, on Sunday, I just want you guys to support his my brother. I mean, all of you know Mr. Ayana now on this show. I mean, you've been listening to him. So support him on Sunday. He will be having his show at, um, Muzon Center by 5 p.m. Just find your way to Muzon Center by 5 p.m. Um, on Sunday, okay? Uh, you guys just need to be there. It's going to be, you know how funny Ayana is. I mean, most of the time when I'm coming for my show, I'm always, I'm always laughing, you know, listening to my radio, you know, before coming for Intimate Talk with Tolu. So make it a day with him. I think you're going to have a nice time. I mean, last week we talked about how to live your life to the fullest. And I think one of the ways to do that is going for shows like this, comedy show, relax, unwind, laugh. Laughter is good for the soul. And of course, tonight I will be starting on that note that, please, if there is any relationship that is making you to be sad and dejected, it is either you work on it or you walk away from it. Yes. Yeah. I remember I said, I'm going to say this before I start tonight's topic. If there is any relationship that is making your life miserable, please, it is either you work on it or you walk away. If it's, if it's making you sad, you deserve to be happy, you deserve to be smiling, please. If every effort you are trying to make to, to be happy, to be smiling, this relationship is taking it away, is it frustrating such efforts, please, walk away. You see, two should be better than one. Two should, should. You should be happier when you are with someone you love. It shouldn't take away from you and make your life so miserable. It doesn't mean that there won't be time of trials or crisis, but come on. You shouldn't be living all your life enduring and enduring and be sad. And be, I mean, life is too short, really, to be in that kind of relationship. If it's not working, talk to a counselor. Do everything possible to work on it. And if you work on it and it's not working, come on, take a walk. You deserve to be better. You don't need to fall into depression all in the name of being in a relationship. Please, you don't have to be. In this part of the world, we find ourselves in this situation a lot because of what will people say. People could say whatever they like. This is your life. This is your happiness we are talking about. All right? And it's on that note I will be starting to my topic. Okay? Why you are in a sexless marriage, and of course, on Tuesday next week, I will be talking about how to come out of it. All right, so if you are in a sexless marriage, or you know someone who is in a sexless marriage, all you need to do is to tell them to tune into this show because next week I'm going to be telling you 
how to come out of this kind of situation. You know, it's may talk with Tolu. Everything about this show is just to make sure your life is doing better, your marriage is doing better. And at the end of the day, it's all about having a better society, which is what Nigeria Info is actually known for. All right. Of course, tonight you could join me live on 99.3 Nigeria Info on Facebook. So if you are now with your radio or you are now with I me mean, in front of your TV, you could actually watch me live on 99.3 Nigeria Info on your Facebook. And of course, you could watch me if you have opportunity to be where your television set is. You could watch me on DSTV channel 259 on Wazo Wazobia Max. And if you are still in traffic, I know that Lagos people don't sleep on time, really. <laughs> it's crazy around here. Come on. So if you are still maybe outside, you're inside your car or somewhere, you just want to turn it to 99.3. And if your husband or your wife, your spouse, your partner is not with you, you so you are in a relationship and your partner is not with you, intimate talk with you. What this show does a, lo a whole lot of time is help people to discuss uh, topics or issues that they can't talk about ordinarily. You see, in this part of the world, that's one of the uh, point I mentioned last week, you know, I talked about inability to talk about sex. That's the way we were wired. We were we were brought up. That's the way we were trained. You know, talking about sex is like a taboo. I mean, people are married, husband and wife. I don't get it's so it's so appalling. Husband and wife married and together, you can't talk about sex to each other. I don't understand. It's so common. It's so, 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 so common in this part of the world. And so the point is, what Intimate Talk with Tolu help you to do is talk about, you see, when I raised those, I mean, from experience, if it's the husband that, you know, stumbled on Intimate Talk with Tolu, what he want to do is introduce the wife. Because Dr. Tolu help you to talk about certain topics that ordinarily you don't want to talk about, you shy away from. And most of the time, I just help you to introduce the topic so that you can sit down and talk about it. And, you know, somebody called me, I was like, Dr. Tulu, my husband and myself we've not been having sex, we've been having a sexless marriage for a long time. But when I started listening to your show, most of the time we make love after your show. I don't know, maybe Dr. Tulu, maybe it's made up with Tulu, puts you in the mood I don't know. I'm just trying to make sure you enjoy your life and live your life to the fullest. I make sure I just want to make sure that your marriage is beautiful. All right. And so, yeah, intimate talk with Dr. Tolu help you to discuss those topics that you are afraid to talk about. And I want to encourage you at at the end of topics like this that you should pick up your, you know, you should sit down as couples and discuss these difficult issues that you are baffling with. Sit down and talk about it, especially if, if there are issues I've been able to raise on this show. And of course, you want to get your pen and paper and write down this point because it is very easy to forget them. Write them down, just the point, so that you could go back to them, look at them over and over again till they become a part of you. All right? And of course, you don't want to be selfish about this. You want to talk to your people, people you care about, and tell them to tune into Intimate Talk with Tolu. There's no reason why your marriage should not be beautiful. You do have an excuse for not having a beautiful relationship if you are listening to this uh, um, to this show. And of course, even if you are not in any relationship, your life should be better off if you are a part of Intimate Talk with Tolu. That is how it should be because this show talked, I mean, touches everything the area of your life that you know that that that, that could help you you know to improve on your life you know so of course no excuse tv radio online intimate all with to lose just their life for you to be a part of it so tell people you care about and before i go straight okay let me just say this of course i started this topic on tuesday and i was actually rushing hoping i could finish it but i couldn't but tonight i'm going to conclude this while you are in a sexless marriage and next week like i said i will talk about how to come up out of a sexless marriage you know i thought i mean i said a lot on tuesday 
considering the number of issues i mean like i just i, I picked you know when i picked topic on this show i picked them based on you know the um feedback from clients from fans for people from people who are listening and sending me messages i picked topics when i noticed that there's certain area that a lot of people are having issues i want to talk about that topic and you know totally break it down that and that's what i've been doing on this show and i told you why i picked this topic because i know the i noticed this thing is becoming like a kind of uh issue a kind of canker worm you know a lot of marriages are going through this and then you start hearing people who've not had sex for one year for six months for six years for 10 years i've seen it and i feel like wow no sex for 10 years and you are living together of course it's 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 terrible and you know like i said i mean that was what why i started this topic but between tuesday and today man i've seen a whole lot you know text messages email a lot of people have even called me dr tolu all i just want is a sex toy get me sex toys you know and why you talk about sex so like i said i think i'm going to be talking about sex toy you know on this show like a topic is controversial but i'm looking at the right way you know to pass it across to us being the kind of people we are and uh i remember you know when you talk about certain issues when you talk about issues like masturbation when you talk about issues like um sex toy when you talk about issues like divorce you know there are some sensitive issues that before you judge people you actually need to walk on their i mean walk in their shoe before you start judging them i remember that i used to have a scenario in my hand uh about sex toy you know um um, do I want to talk about this? Nah, forget about that. All right. Okay. So, <laughs> so the point is, people are going through issues when it comes to sex. Forget it. To Nigerians, married couples, are uh, a lot of people are in trouble when it comes to sexual issues. All right. So, and I, of course, like I said, a lot of reasons why these things happen, and you notice that these days men are going extra mile just to prove a point of how sexually competent they are you know a lot of um drink this rub that there are so many and of course so you begin to wonder how come how come with all these things that people are eating drinking swallowing rubbing ah there are so many all these sexual enhancement stuff so how come a lot of marriages are still in a sexless marriage all right so i'm talking about those things tonight and I've given you, uh, I think I gave you 10 points on Tuesday. I'm going to run through them. And by the time I come back after the short break, I will be giving you the remaining eight points. I talk about unresolved issues. Your life get busy, boredom, payback, illness. I mean, somebody said you didn't mention health issues. I, I, I got that on my Facebook. I talk about sickness and reactions to drugs. I talked about it actually on Tuesday. Incompatible sexual libido. I talk about past struggle. I talk about excessive stress inability to talk about sex distraction from kids and i think i stopped on cultural and religious background which is actually my last point so tonight i will be going straight to my number 12 after this time out you don't want to move a muzzle right Alright, you're welcome back to Intimate Talk with Dr. Tulu. And we are talking why you are in a sexless marriage tonight. And of course, I'm moving straight to my number 12 point that I call making negative comments about body image or sexuality. I can't overemphasize this. You see, I said it, I mean, if you have been a part of this show, you know that it's a very common statement that I make a lot that men sexually are uh, as I mean men sexuality are, are attached or is attached to their ego. Alright. Um you see, if you want to stop having sex as a woman in your marriage, just say something negative. Just say something um demeaning about your husband penis you know just say ah you know or just say something about his sexuality say ah this thing you know maybe you do even mean it 
Maybe you, you are not even serious about it. You just say, ah, uh, I don't enjoy it. You know, just say, I don't enjoy it when you may. I beg go, you know, I beg go, I me mean, just come and do it. So, I, I may do it. I beg me person rest, you know. Oh, uh, I beg, uh, this is, you know, go in domino do, you know, one minute. <laughs> you cannot last for more than a minute. Oh, I beg, I don't even feel the thing. This thing, I mean, I remember one of my clients. The only thing she said was, I know they feel the thing, no, that thing will be like pencil. And that was it. I mean, I was just laughing. I couldn't help but laugh. See, I, I, know, I know they feel the thing, oh, that thing will be like pencil. That was it. You know, so when you make negative comment for a man, he might never be able to have erection because of that statement that you make carelessly. Am I saying you should not talk when there are things when things are not working? You should, and I'm going to be talking about all these things next week. You know, when I talk about how to come out of sex of uh, a sexless marriage. But the point is, men, ego is a big deal for men, and it is so attached to the sexuality that come on. <laughs> You see, you notice that men who find themselves in this situation, whenever they want to make love to their wives, they are always feeling incapable. Even when you try to erase it from their head, I don't mean it, it's not like that. They can't get it out because it's already stuck. They are looking for enlargement. They are looking for penis pulp. They are looking for something to increase the turgidity, something to increase the length, to increase the, you know, because the wife actually said it's like pencil. And most of the time they swallow this, swallow that, and swallow, and everything just messes up their system, you know. So at the end of the day, when you say something negative, the next, the, the next time the one, man want to make love to you, what he's thinking is, ah. Uh, I don't even think I'm capable, especially when you even say, ah, the, the, uh, you, I just come and do one minute, I don't even come, two minutes, you don't come, you can't do two rounds, you can't do five rounds, you know, and all that. I mean, women say that a lot of time, and when the man is coming, when he's trying to get down, the first thing he's thinking is, how do I do this? Can I really, really perform well? Is she going to get satisfied? Me, why it is the... It is the fulfillment, the fulfillment that it gives. I don't understand. It really, I am not a man, and I want to understand them every time when I see how fulfilled they are when they make a woman to scream, a woman to you know to genuinely. They make love to a woman, and the woman is genuinely enjoying it. There's a way it makes a man feel. I don't know why that is like that. I think men are just wired that way, and it's. I think it's just. It's just they are just being men. All right, you know, when they see you really, really, truly enjoying it, you just notice that you are giving them more power. You know, you want to continue doing it. So when you make negative comment, you might be moving towards a sexless marriage. Because the nice time we want to make love to you, thinking, can I last for one minute? Can I last for two minutes? Uh, am I domino do? Am I pencil? Am I this? Uh, can I go more than Iran? All those pressure. And like I said, I said, I, I said I'm going to talk about that topic. Erection is a bastard. I'm going to tell you how your erection works, you know. And as soon as you start thinking about those things, you are sending that message to your erection. And the erection is saying, of course, you can't do it now. I mean, the next thing you see is you start panting, your heartbeat will start increasing, and then you start sweating. It's like a cycle. You start, your heartbeat will start increasing, you start struggling, you start sweating, you are back to your new erection. And then you don't know what to do. And then you start crying. You start worrying. A lot of couples cried, you know. But it's probably because of what you have said. And every time, as soon as this thing starts, it's a cycle. Before you can get back, <laughs> that cycle has to be rewinded. That brain has to be rewinded before the man can get back his erection. So it's that serious. So it could continue like that for the next one year, two years, three years. Till the man will even give up and feel like, I cannot make love to this woman. And of course, it's not just about the men. It could also be about the women. For a woman, women, you know, even though women's sexuality is attached to their emotions, it's also very, the body image thing is a very important issue for women. Women, you know, when you get married to her, you know, she's this slim, figurate lady, and then, you know, after some time when the baby starts coming, I mean, have you ever seen... Do you know what a woman go through for nine months? It's so she <laughs> come on for me. Pregnancy for me is like <laughs> you don't want to know. You don't. When I'm pregnant, I'm I'm just there. I'm I'm just there. 
like for those nine months. I mean, I don't know people, people are having six, seven, eight, nine. I don't know how to do it. That, you know, it's, I know it's easier for some people more than the other, but in my case, and then a woman has to go through, you know, those, you see, I, I, I watch uh, a video online. I think I'm going to even post it about um, a baby that was kicking in a woman's. This baby was, in fact, people were making comment that this baby is going to be a dancer. The way he, the way he, he, she, he was kicking the man, the woman's, you could, as in, bah, 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 everything. As in, it's so, it's so stressful. Not to not talk about the, 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 the um, the uh what do you call it the labor ha huh. and then probably some people have to go through cesarean session huh huh it's not an easy task really it's it is not been easy i i've been i've been there and <laughs> I, I i i mean grace kept me actually i almost lost my life during childbirth because i mean so it's, it's, it's a whole lot of roller coaster. That's the point. I mean, I, why am I even saying this so deeply? I think I'm attached to. I think I'm, I'm touchy when it comes to issues of pregnancy and childbirth, all right? So when a woman, the point is when a woman now come out of all this and she's trying to get her groove back, maybe she's even form, forming into, form, I mean, falling into postpartum de uh, depression. And... And all you see, all you are seeing as a man is the big tummy, is the stretch mark that is coming out, is the boobs that are sagging, is the tummy that is no longer flat, is the laps that is this. Ah. And then you can even say it. And then you are saying it to her. <laughs> Forget it. Too. Every time she wants to make love to you, she's looking for something to cover up because she's feeling she's no longer sexy. That thing drives a lot of women crazy. Men, you need to understand. Especially after childbirth. You are making negative look at you. You are so fat. Look at you. Your tummy is so big. Look at you. She's making effort, especially when a woman is making effort to stay in shape. And all you could see, you can never make positive comment. They are negative and negative. And like I usually say to you, love making for a woman doesn't just start when you want to have sex, when you want to get down. It started from the way you compliment her, the way you said good morning, the way you send romantic text messages, the way you touch her emotionally, the way you connect with her emotion. That is how love making. So for a lot of people, inability to connect to your wife's emotion is the reason why you are in a sexless marriage. Because you kept saying negative things and these things are piling up on his head. I remember, you know, a, a scenario, one of these couple, let me say this, you know, because I feel it's going to help a lot of people and of course, um, if the couples are listening, I, 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 I hope I have liberty to do this because I know you know, I, I, I sign 100% confidentiality and of course nobody can actually think of the person I'm talking about. Alright? So let me just say these people have been married for years and they had just a child and they stopped making love immediately the wife put to bed. And they came to my office, I think about five years later. And their sex life have, have become zero at that point, you know. This are, if you see them, you know, touch couple. And most of my clients are touch, actually. All right. Enlightened, learned. You know, I think those are the people that actually understand what it means to speak to counselors. All right. So, for five years, they've been in this issue. And when the guy came... And so when they came and, you know, when the man entered my office, I like, oh, do you think we should be here, you know, the normal way, the man, African style. And then the man said, oh, no, my wife said we should come. So I said, my wife said we have problem. That's what they are always saying most of the time. All right. Not all the time. And then, and so I was like, so what's the problem? We talked and talked and I was able to pick one of two or two things from her, from him. So when the wife came, you know, I spoke with the wife and I want to know, and then she started, you know, in, in, in psycho, I don't know. In counseling, so much to say, and I'm trying to. You know, in, in counseling, there's something, you know, like psychoanalysis, you want to find out where somebody is coming from. That's why most of the problem that people are going through, they don't even know themselves that that's the cause of the problem. But in this case, you know, when she started, when we, I started, you know, trying to find out and all that, and then she said something about, eh, you know, when I put to bed, that was like five years ago. She said, he said something, you know, the first time we made love, you know, after the childbirth and all that, the first time we made love, he said, eh, 
this place is not the way it used to be. You know, he just made a careless comment about her vagina. He just said, this place is not the way it used to be. And I was like, I just knew. Immediately she said that, that that was a trigger. And I was like, oh, was that a problem? She said, yes. I felt bad. And I felt I'm no longer good. And of course, my breast is not feminine the way it used to be. I have stretched my, my tummy. So for him to even say that the vagina is no longer tight, I just felt, I mean, I've lost it all. And I feel so bad anytime I want to cover myself. I want to wear, she wears her two neck, you know, as in she's always covering up. The man didn't even know and she didn't open up. That's one thing about us. We will not open up in this part of the world. So most of the problem you are battling with in your marriage, your wife will not open up to you. I'm telling you. You'll be, you'll be shocked at the kind of things that is going on in your wife's head. As the, at the kind of secret, the things that your wife is battling with. Most of the time when you finish making love to her, to her you jerk and jerk and jerk and jerk and then you come. You may, and in two minutes, you are... She's crying. She's weeping. She's feeling like, what is this? When am I going to start enjoying sex? And then before you know, you gradually, gradually, your life, your sex life becomes zero. You know, so back to the issue. When, when she told me, I'm like, wow, why did you tell him? She said, I don't know how to tell him. How do you tell a man that kind of a thing? And anyway, to cut the long story short, I knew that was it. That was it. So when the husband now came, and I told him, you know, he came for, you know, his own session again. I was like, so that was, okay. So I was like, oh, do you remember? So after some sometimes, I was like, do you remember having, I mean, saying this to your wife? And he was like, what? I said, do you remember making any careless comments about your wife's vagina? He said, no. I said, oh, you do remember telling your wife about five years ago that this place is no longer the way it used to be? He said, me, when, how? That was a question, me, when, how? And I explained to him, and I told him, this is a problem. This is actually the trigger. The guy just stood up and like, oh my God, Dr. Tolu, I love my wife. She's so beautiful. She's so pretty. I want to make love to her. Every minute, if she allow me, enjoys it. I never knew. I can't even remember I ever said anything. Five years. Five years. He can't even remember. He didn't even know. So you see, careless comments negative comments about body image or sexuality number 13 inability to flirt with each other i'm going to run through i'm no longer spending <laughs> donkey times on this thing inability to flirt with each other how could you be married eh? don't touch me ah people are looking you know? ah people are watching you know? i don't know i don't get it your husband is coming close to you. I want to hug you from the back. Want to quickly touch your boobs. And like people are not looking. Maybe people are there. But it just felt like they are not looking. Let me quickly grab the ass. And you say, ah, stop it now. Ah, people are looking. Ah, no. You can't, you can't even. You, as in, inability to flirt. You can't touch each other. Couples sit together. You see them boning like this. You know, you can't even hold each other's hands. When you are sitting together, you bone and you, you act as if you don't know each other. You can't touch. I mean, how can your husband, the two of you, will be at home and you'll be walking around, you know, you're not doing anything. I mean, the kids are not around. And the man is passing beside you with the thing dangling. You cannot even grab it and, and smile and just run. And you know, play, flirt. Send sexy text messages. Tell the man how much you mean. Send your, you know, beautiful. Tell the guy, I just got a lovely red lingerie. You will love to see it when you come back from work. Flirt, flirt, and flirt. Learn to flirt. All right? Number 14, issues with making the first move. Okay, that one. <laughs> Very big. I could talk about that from now to, but I want to pick us tonight, you know, so I'm rushing through this. I'm not going to be the one to make the first move. This one is saying, I'm not going to be the one to make the first move. I'm always begging. I'm always asking. She will never ask. And women, Nigerian women, ah, we know they ask who, because women, you know, most of the time, you know, uh, I have said that a lot on this show, that testosterone, the you that is responsible for sexual drives, about 25 to 40 percent higher in men. So it is just normal that men are going to desire sex more than women. Women, the only time they want sex, most African women, Nigerian women especially, is when they are in or they are doing their ovulation. After that, you have to use, you have to knock them wood <laughs> before they will wake up. 
As in, it is only when you are on ovulation that you want to have sex. You, you know, making love, actually, I've said that before on this show, it's, you need to have, you need, you, need, you need to make up your mind. It's about having conscious, deliberate effort, setting your mind. I remember one of my clients, you know, that told me that, all I have to do is just to picture the way my husband make love to me, picture the way he touches me, picture it on my head and think about him, and then I'll start getting with some women. No, you will touch, you will lick, you will do, you will get with. <laughs> because their mind is not there. You can't make the first move. The man is always the one make. After some time, because of the way men's sexuality are, if he's the man that is always making the, the man will be feeling belittled. He'll be feeling like, oh, is it really me that wants it? There's nothing that kills a man like. You feel like he's not doing anything. You are not enjoying it. He's just doing it for himself. Don't cuckoo give him. Really, don't cuckoo give him. If it's all about just come and do, you know, you can't, you can't warm up to him and make him look, babe, I want you. As all men too, even if they are white. I mean, this thing is not even on. It's just in both ways, actually. So really, I mean, most of the uh, um, questions that I've gotten between Tuesdays and Thursdays has been majorly from women. My husband doesn't touch me. My husband doesn't touch me. And if I move close to him, he will say no. So some women are actually making the first move. And the men, it is only when they are ready to do it. And when they are ready to do it, it must be just that their style. Only one style. I don't get it. Number 14, okay, issues with making the first move. 15, constant rejection. Constant rejection when you kept saying no, I don't want you, no, I don't want you, no, go away. After some time, the person will look for alternative now. We start begging the person. I mean, and that is one funny thing these days. Before women used to, you know, cry and say, Ah, I mean, I mean, you know, our forefathers they used to have like five, six, even plenty concubines. You know, this one will come on Monday, this one come on Tuesdays. <laughs> You don't have that luxury again, man. And the earlier you realize it, the better. That things are changing. Your wife is no longer like your great grandmother, like I usually said. She wants orgasm. Things are changing. Women are aware. They know they are right. So there's nothing like, um, I don't want you to go. You know, <laughs> let me even say this about my dad, you know. Uh, <laughs> No, forget that. But constant rejection. You know, you keep saying no. You keep saying, I don't want to. You keep pulling the person away. This, this. If you are pushing your wife away, there are 1,000 and one men. You see, those are the reality we don't want to hear. It's the truth. It's a fact. And it's happening. There are 1,000 and one men that are really, they are ready to tell her, babe, you are beautiful. Babe, I love you. No thanks to social media. All she needs to do is just to pancake her face, her poop picture. 10 men will be clicking like... <laughs> Inability, I mean, constant rejection. And, then, I mean, and, and this one is actually more common with women. You know, you keep saying no. You keep saying no. Your husband will beg you, will cry. For what now? For what? If this is right. Just as it is your right. It is no right. I say it a lot of time. Women, it's not like, I'm not saying you don't have the right to, I mean, it's your body. You have right over your body, but come on. If you are using sex as a weapon for your husband, you are a witch, actually. Number 16, addiction to pornography and masturbation. Massive, massive, massive. I can talk about this one from now till tomorrow. You see, <laughs> oh, men, oh men, this is very common with men. It happens to women, but just a very little uh, uh, um, percentage, but mostly men. I have seen so many. You, you see, when we talk about masturbation, I mean, masturbation was a topic that I discussed on this show for like three weeks and I broke it down, you know. And people kept asking me, Dr. Tolu, masturbation, Dr. Tolu, masturbation, it's not something I can easily go back to for now. But when people are telling you, ah, masturbation is no big deal, like in some, in some places in, in, in developed worlds now, in some or most of these developed countries, in some places, if you talk about make masturbation negatively or you say masturbation is bad, they are going to sue you. But in Nigeria, we know we have culture, we know we have a way of doing things, and that is not even what I'm talking about. Our culture, as you know, as as actually you know, fashioned us in certain ways. There are things that other people will not see as a big deal, but because we're Nigerian, you will see it as a big deal as long as you are still in this country, and because of that, 
masturbation maybe people other people can be doing it in america and you won't worry them you in nigeria the society will compel you to start worrying you when you get addicted to masturbation these are part of the problem your you, the only time you want to have sex the only time you want to have erection is where it is only when you are loving yourself you know they call it self-love jerking whatever all those things you do it is only when you are touching yourself, when you are holding yourself, that is the only time you could sustain erection. I have seen, I have seen cases, so many, and I could categorically tell you that masturbation could take your erection away from you. Considering issues that I've seen with clients that we've done together, we sat together, and at the end of the day, the man was able to get his erection back and was able to say goodbye to masturbation. So, for masturbation could be no big deal to you if it's not affecting your life negatively. But if you move from just touching yourself and just doing it for fun, just doing it, if you move from that point to the point of getting addicted, you could see a woman and feel like who needs a babe, who needs a woman. Come on, pornography and masturbation. I mean, some some married men, uh, you know, porn, porn. <laughs> There are certain things I would love, love to say, you know. You see, when it comes to porn, let me not delve into that. But the point is, if you are addicted to pornography and masturbation, you could gradually find yourself in a sexless marriage. I have seen them <laughs> in numbers. Different, different, different. 41 years old, 42, 47, 52, married, no sex. No sex for three, for four, for five, for seven years, and all the man does is just touch him. Say, I mean, who, 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 alone, all alone. Addiction to porn, and then my number. Okay, my number one point now. I've given you sixteen. My number seventeen. My number seventeen is keeping no relationship as, as alternatives. All right, you see, most women, Nigerians, will pretend a lot. What most women do is, my one is not giving me sex. I don't need to beg my ex. I know thanks to social media, you, you, the ex is there. Maybe you, you just had a bad day and then you put it on your wall. Oh, what a day! My my world is crumbling or something. I mean issues i mean people pulled a lot of stuff like that and you see the guy they both strong with you you know you can always lean on my shoulder you know just like dr tulu used to say on this show you know you can always lean on my shoulder what's your problem and then before you know it the man and i mean the woman is there giving it to the man anyhow coming home sh shutting down and then the man too when he goes out and me there's an alternative he's not working at home no erection in the house when he goes outside erection is working and maybe when i talk about erection is a bastard i'm going to be talking about that particular scenario you can't sustain erection at home when you go outside the, you are you are doing ten <laughs> parents <laughs> and at the end of the day, you are not even making up your mind to work on what is not working at home. You are not fixing what is not working as long as you can get an alternative. And before you know it, your marriage becomes sexless. Number 18, no physical attraction. That is why I tell people, please get married to somebody you are physically attracted to. Do not come and say, ah, it's not me, it's my pastor, it's not me, it's my this. You are not going to blame anybody for your, for your, for your action. It is, it is your choice. It is also so a lot of time people get married to people they are not sexually attracted to or physically attracted to. You look at the person, there is nothing enticing you about the person, and you are saying, Hey, I don't after marriage, you start looking for big boobs. I tell men, No, if if you know that your marriage cannot survive with big breasts, please look for a woman that has big breasts. And some of the time, most of the time, <laughs> it's something I want to say. No, don't, don't let me say, <laughs> don't let me say, all right. So, if you know that you can't do without breast, you know, your life is all about breast. You know that's your weakness. If I don't get it, I will never enjoy my marriage. You know, there's something I talk about. You know, let me quickly mention this. When you are trying to make a choice in marriage, there's something I call a, a scale of preference. Just like you have a nicknomies, you know. You remember your secondary school economics, you have a scale of preference, you have a, your opportunity cost and your alternative for gone. 
everybody that want to get married should have a scale of preference even if you did you can write it down but even if you do write if you don't write it down have it at I mean, in your head that this 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 are the quality that i'm looking for in the person i want to get married to please don't make that mistake it doesn't mean that you're not going to be in, fall in love with that person but you should you, you can't just be you, it can't just be anybody marriage is too serious really you should have that and when you have your list, you should have your opportunity cost and alternative for gone. Your opportunity cost are the are the qualities that are at the top of your list, and that your alternative for gone are the qualities at the bottom of your list. Now, what that means is that if your number one is she must be God fearing, she must be born again. If that is your number one, you know that if this particular Thing is not there. I won't enjoy this marriage. But there are some that are going to be your alternative for God. You want them. But if it's still not there, I will still love my wife. I'm still going to be cool with my husband. Those one could be your alternative for God. So if you if number one, you know, on your scale of preference list is boobs. <laughs> please, oh, if it's bobo, please, oh, <laughs> if it's six packs. Tall guy, dark. I mean, I'm a matchmaker. Uh, you know, I was talking to one of my clients today, and I'm feeling so terrible. You know, the way she spoke with me. Oh, Dr. Tony, totally, you didn't even call me after how many weeks that I've registered. You know, you were just quiet. I was like, I have no found the right person for you. So you were like, she was like, are there people on the queue? Does that mean you have to clear? And I said, no, there are people that registered today. I'm able to match them today. And there are people who have registered for six months. I'm not able to match them. I am not God. I want it to happen like now. But at the same time, you have your list. When you register with me, you're going to list. Everybody has to list. I want this. I want this. I want this. I want this. Maybe what is on your number one is the thing that the guy doesn't have. What am I going to do? Maybe you say, oh, I mean, I see that a lot of time, of time with, especially when um, most of our sisters or ladies from the East, you know, Catholic, you want the person to be a Catholic. And the man is saying, no, 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 I don't want a Catholic. And so some say, I don't want, I, I must, it must be, she must be a Yoruba woman. And all the Yoruba girls I'm saying, I mean, I don't know. A lot of men are actually looking for Yoruba ladies these days. And all the Yoruba ladies I'm saying, must, I say, I don't want Ibo, I don't want Awusa, I must be a Yoruba man. Then I, I'm, I'm in a fix, all right, talking about, you know, physical attraction that was what took me to that place so please make sure you are attracted to the person if you like boom boom if you like them fat go if that is your number one on top of your list if you know your marriage is not going to survive unless the lady is shapy or the man has six packs or i don't know and then my final point is no foreplay that's my number 19 which is no foreplay and after this i will be taking your questions i, I was really trying to make sure I get this done with tonight. No foreplay. <laughs> hey, how do you make love to a woman without touching her? How do you make love to a man without sending some signals to his brain? How do you make love without foreplay? I, I usually say that love making is like a three course meal. You know, I say that on this show, right? You have your starter, you have your main course, and you have your dessert. Now, all, most of you that are complaining of no sex in your marriage, all you do is the main course. No starter, no dessert. All right? You're just there. You know, your love making is so boring. The same style, the same bed, the same way, always on the bed. Always the same style. Always husband, uh, wife under husband on top missionary missionary is beautiful but even your missionary you can't spice it up no foreplay how do you make love to a woman i've told you severally that in fact close to 80 percent of women we know which orgasm through just penny penetration and you think i can jack i can jack you jack it for one hour she's she's feeling like will you get up you know you jack you jack no touching nothing <sighs> come on how do you, as every time you are coming close to that woman, especially, this is a big deal for men. You know, maybe I should talk about Conilingos and Blue Job on this show. I don't know. You guys, do you want me to talk about it? Really? It's something I should talk about. I know some people say, hey, Blue Job, oh, ah, Conilingos, oh, the mount I'm using to pray. I am telling you that some women, there are certain things that if you don't do for them, especially those that are circumcised, they might never enjoy sex. I talked to you that there are two ways, I mean, now there are about five ways, but 
everyday research are bringing up new ways, but just restrict yourself to the two ways to make a woman to reach orgasm, either through vaginal orgasm or through clitoral stimulation. Clitoral orgasm, vaginal orgasm. Some of you does not even know where the G-spot is. Now, how do you even get there? You don't know where it is. How do you get there? So most of the time, if you make love to a woman, if you can't eat the G-spot, she can never orgasm. So the only way to make her orgasm is for play. You can't put her in the mood. She's dry. You just jump on her. You force yourself. You force yourself. You say, eh, eh, what's, what's all that? What's all that? Is it an issue? Is it something I have to do this? I have to do this. Why don't you do it? Spice up. It. Spice it up. Get down and dirty. All right. I think I'm going to be talking about foreplay. Foreplay as a topic on this show. Okay. <laughs> I've said so much tonight and I think I tried. I tried to talk about the things you guys don't want to talk about and you're having problem and you're dying in silence. All right? So by the time I come back after the short break, I will be taking your calls. I tried tonight. I want to answer as much, as many calls as I could. Okay? All right? So we're still talking why you are in a sexless marriage. Don't worry, next week I'm going to be telling you how to come out of a sexless marriage. And I'm going on a short break. By the time I come back, I will be taking your questions, your comments, your opinion. Let's talk to the fixer. All right, you're welcome back to Intimate Talk with Dr. Tulu. So I want to pick your calls now. And of course, you could send me your messages. Go to my Facebook page, Intimate Talk with Dr. Tulu. Intimate Talk with Tulu, actually. That's it. On Facebook, Intimate Talk with Tulu. And on Instagram, is Intimate Talk with Tulu. You could drop your thoughts, and I'm going to read them as well. All right? So for now, let me pick your calls, okay? You know? Hello? Good morning, Dr. Tony. Good morning. Yeah. Sorry, I missed that on the program. Uh, this is GDA from Ovijo. Okay. I missed that, I missed that on the program. I was busy, kind of. So I tried searching for it on YouTube. It was hard getting it. How can I please? You could get it on 99.3 Nigeria Info on Facebook. It's there live, yeah. Okay, 99.3 right. Nigeria Info. Yeah, okay. all right. Thank you. Thank you for calling. Hello? Hello? Yeah. Hello, Dr. Salou's program. Yes, please. Okay. Uh, I'm getting feedback from your radio. Okay. Uh, now I'm watching it live on. Okay, so you want to lower your TV? I know it already. Okay. Ah, uh, in fact, I bless God that I listen to this program this night. <laughs> it was my first time. Oh, really? I'm watching it now. Okay. It's like you. Okay, it's not live. I'm not live now. I guess. Well, I can see you talking to someone else there. Yeah, I'm talking to you. Okay. Mm. Well, um, the, what I want to discuss with you is a very vital issue that I'm really struggling with. Mm. Um, just now you're talking about uh, why you are in a sexless marriage. marriage. Yeah. yeah. Me, I'm not married. Okay. I'm 38 years old. Wow. But... I think I'll be hiding under the shell of, of masturbation mm. sometimes now. Mm. And I've tried all my possible best to let go easily. Mm. Mm. It's not that it doesn't deprive me of going out with a lady or anything. I just find it more convenient because of things that are going on these days. The way I find people that are attracted to me behave around me so it makes me to like let me let everybody be and be my of so I won't be having any hmm. you know when you're dealing with people you have to be very very careful mm -hmm. when it comes to opposite sex mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. they are 38 so, ah, what are you worried about what are you afraid of uh, no, I'm, I can't 
really afraid. I know that the relationship with me has not been able to work the way I want it. Mm. You, you just, you, you, you said something earlier and there's something really touched me. You said you need to set a scale of preference and in this, that is the area I really want to hit the nail this night. If I bring this one, like I have issue with my pastor in the past uh, regarding this, um, this scale of preference you just mentioned. Okay, I'm always attracted to, because I don't want some like, start looking next way. Mm-hmm. So, I just want the lady who is, at least, is not issue of, this one is not issue of whether she's got fearing or not. At least you're okay on your own. Mm-hmm. Salvation is a personal issue. If I'm beginning to force it on you, I'm not the Holy Spirit who will put that mm-hmm. right. Mm-hmm. So I need to just let it go. Do it your own way. I do it in my own way. Mm-hmm. But we get to heaven, God will resolve that. Mm-hmm. But it's not done like that here. Mm. You want that person who is Holy Ghost, who is, who is this one? Uh, be this one. Be this one. A lot of marriages uh, are in trouble because of that. Uh, uh, this is not. I know God does His own thing in His own way. Good. Mm. I've been serving in the church for several years and all quite okay. But I have it on uh, my head that I don't want to marry a lady from my church because they are full of things. Mm. Yes, and I, I know what as I judge and all those things. But I'm not judging them because they don't judge me also. But I come because of that and I say, okay, because what anyway, uh, l- Let me just tell you to round up. I don't know. The time is never enough. I don't okay. know. Okay. Mm. I just, I just want okay, so now masturbation. You are still yeah. single at 38. You are too careful for ah. certain reasons. Um, you know, I okay. just know. You, you, need, you need to you need to see me you need to schedule if not me if you have any counselor or any sex therapist you could talk to around you you could you need to come out of masturbation it's masturbation might not be a big deal but as soon as you're addicted it becomes an issue it becomes an issue and of course i mean look I at have somebody i'm teaching presently mm. um that keeps me away from me it's a little while but okay Sometimes I just look at the person that is she faithful, is she... You might actually also faithful. have some issues you need to deal with personally. You might not be yeah. sure because I'm sensing that you are too careful. I, I don't know why you are too careful and it could be se- for certain reasons that even you yourself you are not aware of. Please look for, look for a professional counselor and schedule an appointment. It's very important. You need it. In fact, for your sanity, you need it. I'm not talking about your church council. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. okay. Yeah, take okay. care of yourself. All right. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good, good morning. This is Nelson speaking. Okay. Um, okay, good morning. Um, actually, you're busting my head here. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, really? Seriously. Hmm. Actually, I want to ask for something. Okay. I actually need a lady. But, here, this my area is, is, I don't know, most every lady here, they are too mm-hmm. young and they, <laughs> most of them are, are hooked. Mm-hmm. You know, ladies of nowadays. Mm-hmm. But, to my test, um, although I know I'm not too tall like that, but I need someone that is more taller than I. And okay, so all you guys are I'm looking not. for, all you guys are looking for women. <laughs> I have a lot of women on my list. Well, I'm looking for men for them. Please talk to me. Let's reach a compromise, okay? All right? Okay. Thank you. All right. Um, the front side more the, you understand what I'm talking about? The yeah. net under. I get to my father. No, I, I didn't get that. I said, mm-hmm. the person must be tall. Mm-hmm. Then she must have the front side. She must have boobs. What's the front part? <laughs> breast is breast. I beg. Mean, I've caught you off. <laughs> breast is breast. But you could always talk to me at the end of the show. I'm going to drop my number so we could talk about this, all right? Okay? Hello? 
Hello. Hey, yeah, finally. Oh. Good morning. Good morning. Oh, I thought it was a lady. Yeah, she's a lady. Uh, okay, good morning. I'm glad that I have a lady on my show tonight. I'm very happy to get in touch with you. Thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. I fall victim of what you have been seeing. This is my second time. Mm. I was really sleeping on Tuesday. Oh. <laughs> so I was able to get your message on that Tuesday and it really touched me. Mm. Because for good it now, mm. I've been denying my husband from the sex. <laughs> and uh, when you see so many things, I, I was shedding tears. Oh. <laughs> I was shedding tears mm. because I knew I've missed the Lord. Mm. When, and it has affected my marriage to the extent that my husband is no longer with me. Wow. The issue is on ground and it's really affecting me mm. and the children. Mm. So, 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 what happened? You've not been, you, you've not been, you didn't get it right in the area of sex, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. Mm. But, what in a, in a situation whereby when you 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 are meeting with your husband and you discover that you're having a, 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 your you know, private part is itching or you're having STDs. Yes, yes, yes. Mm. What you do? Mm. Okay, you see now when there is I mean this kind of marriage you are seeing now, it looks like a lot of things are wrong with the marriage. So the STD issue, the cheating, you see, when, when there is cheating in marriage, the cheating is, is just on its own. Solve the problem with the marriage first. Then you come back to the cheating and handle it. If you are solving cheating, if there is a problem that is causing the cheating, the person will keep going back to the cheating. So, I mean, having STD, I mean, it's, it's not okay. It's, I mean, how could somebody go outside and, I mean, you, if that is if you are sure. And sometimes, even when the person is no longer doing it, if the person, uh, maybe he has had it and is not treating himself, he could also resort to this kind of situation. All right? So, um, I just think that um, I'm getting feedback from you, so I'm going to cut it now. Okay? So, I just think that, see, my time is, sorry. Even the Facebook, I've not been able to read anything, and the messages are so many. Oh, my, my. I thought tonight I would be able to, like, do so much. And somebody sent me a message, Dr. Tony, you should be doing this day to one, one day. I'm like, am I not going to sleep? <laughs> oh, wow, wow. Okay. Sorry, Facebook guys. Sorry tonight, okay? Phone calls. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Okay, so back to that question. You need to... You see, when you have this kind of situations, there are issues like this that most of the time you don't get to hear them. Like, I talk about them on this show, and I know that a lot of people are in this situation, and I feel for you that you even have to shed tears listening to me. I just wish you could talk to a professional counselor. Talking to your uncles, daddies, mommy... Your pastors might not solve this problem. I'm sorry. You need to seek professional help. All right? I'm going to pick one last call. One last call. Hello? Hello? Yeah, good morning. Mm. Yeah, I'm, I'm, listen I'm listening to you. Yeah. I just happened to be at this station. Okay. Uh, I usually listen to uh, mm. music at night and I just say, okay, let me just tune it. Oh. <laughs> I just have something that I would like to with me. Okay. Uh, this area that you smile with, mm. it's just like the parent is a big problem. Mm. 
And I want to believe that the audience will talk about it are all adults. Mm -hmm. But it's very unfortunate that we only talk about the inclusion. The this discussion, you know, a man or female, they just discuss them in closet. Mm -hmm. You know, things that should be openly discussed so that um, a number of people who are sick uh, could actually find some sick treatment. Right, 100%. Oh. Yes. Now, forgive me if I'm blunt. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But this, uh, a number of them are like dry fish. Mm -hmm. You can't stand that. Mm -hmm. Now, you talk about men and then the also the stereotypes. They come, they just fall on their men and then no fall to the and it's just just that one thing. How many women let, let's say in their forties into fifties want you to raise their legs the way you would want to? <laughs> Is it about raising the legs now? <laughs> <laughs> Funny enough, that racing of leg is a big deal. Okay. It's a big deal. It, it looks so simple, but you just mentioned it now, and I realize I have a lot of couples who are in this situation. Wife keeps saying, don't race my leg. Don't race my leg. Don't race my leg. I don't get it. And then the husband keeps saying, and there are some, actually there are some men too who say, I don't want to race my wife's leg. I don't want to do certain style because my wife is not a prostitute, actually. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I know you want to talk more, but please, my time is up, sorry, sorry. All right, guys, sorry, that's all I will be able to take on tonight's episode of Meeting Me Talk with Dr. Tolu. I have some people here that I would actually have loved to read for matchmaking, but I don't have time for that. But if you want to reach me for one-on-one -on -one counseling, for sex therapy, or for matchmaking, reach me on 81 845-75377. To enjoy more of this, our Ogun Get videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.